Hello, Leos. I'm going to get right into the reading, so whatever the cards want to say. Burnt by the sun, ambition, extension, reach, knowledge, study, learning, education, supernatural, miraculous, otherworldly, call of the night, daring adventure, excitement. Jealousy, envy, punishment, changing course. Witness. To no personal evidence speaking out. Enlightenment, inspiration, epiphany. I'm getting the energy here about some kind of truth being revealed or there's something that you've been trying to figure out and I feel like it's going to become more clear to you. Let's get more into it and see what this is about. Redemption, absolution, forgiveness, penance, death rites, saying goodbye, formal occasion, honoring lives. Mortal, finite, fragile, ecstasy, yielding, rapture, bliss, transmission, influence, and internal struggles, personal challenges, wanting to improve. I'm seeing some sort of major transformation or maybe like a spiritual initiation. It's like you're leveling up basically is what I'm feeling here. I almost feel like this could be taking place in the higher like higher realms or the astral realm. I, I feel like there's a lot going on here spiritually where your spirit guides are working with you. And I feel like you're wrapping up um, old ways of thinking or old ways, old karmic cycles. And I feel like you're going to be rewarded for wrapping those things up. Because I feel like the way that you were doing things, it could be a job. It could be multiple situations here. It could just be a way of thinking. Maybe you were just exhausting yourself. But with Burnt by the Sun... It's like something, there was some kind of pattern or cycle that was repeating. And again, this could be, this might be a way of doing things. It might be a way of seeing things. It could be multiple things here, but whatever it is, I feel like you were burnt out by it. I feel like you were exhausting yourself. It's like something that just kept some kind of karmic cycle that you weren't learning the lessons from it or you weren't... Um, you were refusing to step out of your comfort zone, so you just kept repeating, or it might be like a thought process or a thought pattern or um, something of that sort that you were just very stubbornly holding on to, and I think you got burnt out by it. So I almost feel like you're kind of going back and redoing things here because we have somebody that's studying. We have knowledge, study, learning, education. Now, this could be... Um, learning different ways of communicating, different ways of thinking, feeling, being, different ways of um, just just different perspectives. Just it's, it's kind of like you're changing your outlook on a lot of things. And I feel like this is divinely guided too. And I feel like as it's basically like you, you have the same goals, but I feel like the way that you were trying to get to those goals just wasn't working. But you're learning a new way of getting to those goals. So like, let's say that you're trying to manifest love or you're trying to manifest money or career or some kind of abundance. It's like you might have had a, a bad relationship with, I mean, because money is an energy. So some of you might have had like a bad relationship with money or negative beliefs about that or negative beliefs about love. So it's like you were trying to get to certain goals, but it's like you were trying to do it your way. You were very stubborn. You were very adamant. You weren't really allowing anybody to help you. You weren't really allowing your spirit guides to help you. You just kind of kept repeating whatever it might be. There's multiple different things that this could apply to. So take it as it resonates. But the energy I'm getting here is it's kind of like you were, tr you were repeating the same cycle like again and again and again with something. This, this same thought process and each time you failed, each time it, it ended up not going well for you. You know what I mean? It's like this pattern kept repeating. So I think you're finally looking back at these cycles and you're realizing you need to do things a different way. And you're doing that study, learning, education, knowledge, 
it, it's like you're getting on board with your spirit guides and you're you're learning you know, you're not being so stubborn anymore. You're being open to the supernatural help. And I feel like this is going to bring back your passion for life. We have the call of the night, daring adventure, excitement. It's like things are going to become exciting again. You might also be opening up to spirituality, to psychic work, kind of having some epiphanies when it comes to, you know, the spiritual world, like recognizing that this kind of thing is real, recognizing this energy. Um, because it just seems like it, it just seems like your passion for life is being renewed. And that's because you're changing your perspective, you're changing your mindset, you're getting yourself out of this stagnant energy, and you're taking the time to study and to do things a different way. Um, and then we have witness to know personal evidence to speak out enlightenment, inspiration, epiphany, innovation. So I feel like you're being guided, you're being divinely guided here, and you're being shown this different way to do things with enlightenment. And then we have redemption, um, kind of forgiving yourself for things in the past too, and being redeemed and finding that balance. And then we have, I'm almost taking this death rights as to be almost like a death and rebirth in a way. It's almost like you're becoming, you're letting go of the things that are no longer serving you. And you're letting go of the, the things about your person, about yourself that aren't about your personality or about yourself that just don't feel how do I explain it it's like you're letting go of an old version of yourself that isn't really in alignment with who you really are on a soul level you're letting go of um maybe like like maybe like being overly stubborn it's it's okay to be stubborn sometimes but I mean like stag like this is like letting go of like stubborn stagnation um doing things the hard way just it's it's kind of like I'm seeing like the devil tarot card. It's it's not it's not energy that it's energy that you would want to let go of. You know what I mean? It's it's things that are not aligned with who you truly are on a soul level, and they're not aligned with who you want to be. So it's kind of like a death and rebirth process. You're being initiated here, changing course here. Mortal, finite, fragile, fragile, uh, ecstasy, yielding, rapture, bliss, influence, impact, wanting to improve. You know, so it's kind of a bit of a process here, but it, it looks like you are getting out of stagnant energy finally. So let's pull some tarot cards to you and see what they want to say. The devil, we <laughs> got the devil right off the bat. Okay. The four of wands. Five of swords. Five of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, Two of Cups. I'll show you because I know you guys can't see all of it. Page of Swords. Eight of Pentacles. The Hermit Reversed. The King of Pentacles. Okay. So being gentle with yourself during this process is really important, but, you know, being continuing to go through the process at the same time, finding that balance. This to me is just kind of providing further clarification on the cards we already pulled because I'm looking, sometimes I pause to kind of channel and just like look at the cards and the images and see what I feel off of it. And I feel I'm getting the, I'm getting the quote, um, what is that quote? If you want peace, prepare for war. That's the kind of, that's the quote that's coming to mind. I feel like this is somebody who, it's like you might have toxic patterns or ways of thinking, but it might feel normal to you. Four of Wands is about, it's like a peace. It's, you know, calm, peaceful. It's, it's kind of like that feeling of home sometimes as well. I almost feel like for some of you, it's like you might just feel like because of what you've been through maybe in childhood, it's like toxic patterns might just feel natural to you. That might feel normal to you. I just I just see like kind of an internal struggle here, basically. 
I also could take it as, you know, you have this this devil energy in which, you know, the devil card just represents like toxic patterns, like defense mechanisms, um, just things that aren't really serving you anymore. The things that hold you back basically from doing what you want to do and in, in having the kind of life that you want. Um, but it's like you're seeking that peace and that calm and that stability, but there is still a little bit of like an internal struggle here. Five of songs, five of swords, five of songs, five of swords is, you know, like defensiveness, competition, five of pentacles can be anxiety, financial issues, feeling left out in the cold. And like with two of pentacles here, it's like you're trying to find that balance. You're still trying to, there's still a lot of confusion, but I, I think that you are, you are at least getting yourself out of the stagnant energy. So you are figuring everything out. With the Two of Cups, you do have love here as well. Um, Page of Swords, Eight of Pentacles. So Page of Swords is like, you know, the pages are kind of young, but they're very, um, they're like, as far as like the court cards, it's like the pages are, you know, the youngest of the court, but they're they're very excited to learn. You know, Page of Swords is, it's like somebody who, you know, swords can represent its air energy. It also represents, you know, intelligence, thoughts, um, so it's like somebody is excited to learn. They're they're excited to, you know, change their perspective. They're excited to see another way of, of viewing the viewing the world or viewing relationships. It's like somebody is is you know, they're they're eager to get on this path. And so it, it looks like it is happening for you. It looks like it is happening for somebody here with the eight of pentacles too, that's studying, patience, perseverance. It's really um could be studying spiritual concepts as well. Like somebody here might be, and this could be you or this could be your person, but somebody here might be studying spiritual concepts. They might be studying like witchcraft or occult work, or they might just be studying. Um, I feel like it's just also just this energy of observing, of, you know, doing things differently, of just gen, gen, general studying of, you know, whatever they might be interested in. But I think it's also basically kind of studying, um, how do I explain the energy, like kind of studying humanity in a way, like basically, um, like kind of being in like this philosophical energy or like almost like a, like a psychological, I guess, in a way too, where it's like, you're, you're thinking about different perspectives or really kind of doing the it's like a very spiritual energy where it, it's like you're opening your mind up and you're thinking about, you know, multiple perspectives. You're thinking about like you're, someone's really very introspective right now. and But it's really a beautiful thing because it's like they're putting the work in. They're putting the time and energy in there. They're opening their mind up They're They're opening up to multiple perspectives. Um they're studying the things that they're genuinely interested in. So this could be somebody that's like going back to school or somebody who's studying um, like a new career field or something of that sort as well. But whatever it is, it looks like it will be successful because with the hermit energy reversal, like the hermit upright is somebody who's who's kind of um, a little bit isolated. But I feel like with the hermit reversed, it's like you're it's interesting, too, because the hermit upright is also very introspective because it's somebody who's kind of like isolated themselves um, but, to, but reversed, it's, it's like, it's, it's interesting because it's like, you're still very introspective, but you're not, you're introspective in a different way than you were before. I feel like you were introspective in the past, but it's like, you weren't getting to things on a deeper level or like you weren't doing the shadow work in the past. Does that make sense? It's like somebody was like introspective, but it's like, they were, it's, it's almost like they were, how do I explain it? like missing the bigger picture or they were they were introverted or they, they were introspective but it's like they were only seeing things from their perspective they were only seeing it's like they would be introspective but I feel like there was like a block like their traumas would come up you know what I mean it like it might be one of those these like somebody that like gets in their head about things and they think about things a lot but they're like they're not actually seeing multiple multiple perspectives they're just seeing their trauma so it'd be someone that like gets in their head and just over analyzes and overthinks but they're like well, this the world is this way because I've, you know, I this is what I've seen so far or relationships are this way because this is what I've experienced with most of my exes. You know, it's that kind of thing where it's like they still they thought they were open minded. They thought they were doing the deep soul searching, but it's like there was that block there where they were still just their perception was still just based on their trauma. It was still it's like their perception was still based on trauma or other people's opinions or it was just still a very limited way of thinking like they still weren't seeing the whole picture um so it's like they could be introverted and introspective but it's like they would just you know 
think about things in in um, very limited ways, basically. You know what I mean? It's like they weren't really getting anywhere. They were just kind of going in circles and thinking about, you know, it, it was still just based on based on their current beliefs and based on, you know, you know, all that. So it's, it's interesting. It's like this person is being introspective and this could be also, if this is, isn't you, this could also be an insight into your person's mind. Like this might be this person, um, maybe had limited views about your relationship. And now it's like, they're, they're seeing, they're more open to their feelings now for some, it's like, they might be like, they're seeing from your perspective more. But, um, but yeah, it's like this person's still introspective, but now they're introspective in a much deeper way. They're not, it's not just them overanalyzing and just, it's just, you know, just blocking their spirit guides out and just being maybe too impressionable and just kind of being in, stuck in their head about something. It's like, and there's a different energy too, because I feel like in the past, it's like that person would go in circles and they would, it's like you or this person, whoever it is, whether this is you or somebody else. But I feel like the, the person that I'm channeling here, it's like they would just go in circles, but they never got clarity. They never got answers. You know what I mean? Like they could sit there for an, for hours and hours, like obsessing over details and analyzing things and trying to figure it all out. But it's like at the end of the day, they, they still were completely confused. And now it's like since they're learning and studying and they're they're opening up to new perspectives and they're they're letting go of that stubbornness and, you know, really opening up to different views of the world. And really just finding themselves. They're really, you know, figuring out who they want to be, figuring out who they are on a soul level and just finding the things that align with uh, who they are and maybe studying certain things that they find interesting too that maybe they, you know, maybe like studying new hobbies or new uh, career choices or whatever it might be. Um, anyway, yeah, it's like, it's like this person's, you know, introspective now but they're introspective in a much deeper way they're able to get these these new insights they're able to channel insights from their spirit guides they're able to um they're able to think more clearly they're able to get answers when they're introspective now instead of just going in circles it's like they can do the soul searching and they can they can really get in their head but it's like they're actually getting clarity like they're actually grounding themselves and and meditating on it and you know, starting to learn, I think it's still kind of a process for this person where they don't always know when it's their intuition and when it's fear. But I do feel like this person is at least on that path towards learning how to use their intuition, like they are starting to, to really learn how to use their intuition is what I'm feeling here. And they are becoming the person they want to be, they want to be a king of pentacles or a queen of pentacles. You know, this is somebody who is, you know, financially successful, stable, grounded, mature, um, loyal, strong, very balanced energy. So this person is, um, this person is working on becoming that and it's there, there is success because you are, like I said, someone you're, you're learning or studying, you're opening your mind up, you're letting go of stubbornness, you're learning to use your intuition. Um, you're not getting discouraged. You're, you're accepting that it's a process too. You're not getting discouraged and giving up if you're wrong about things. You're, you're more willing to admit when you're wrong and you're more willing to, I feel like somebody's perspective on being wrong is also starting to change. Whereas I, I think in the past, somebody was very kind of stubborn and kind of more in their ego. So it's like, if they were wrong about something, they were just kind of like, screw this. Well, I don't like, they just did not want to be wrong about anything. But now I think that they're kind of seeing it as part of the learning process where they're like, okay, I was wrong, but I'm going to take notes and I'm going to see why I was wrong and I'm going to get it right. I'm going to try to get it right next time. Like somebody is kind of like, I think they're doing that with their intuition. They're, they're learning. They're, they're seeing it as like a trial and error process where they, you know, they know it might take some work and some effort to really develop your, develop their intuition, but it seems like they are doing that and they are stepping out of their comfort zone and stepping out of, um, hermit energy justice. And you have divine justice too, for, you know, for going through that three of cups, the hierophant king of cups, nine of pentacles. Hmm. Two of swords reversed, three of wands upright, six of swords, nine of swords, six of pentacles.
There's some anxiety that someone's having here too, because six of swords is about starting a new life. But nine of swords is like anxiety, like being in your head, like insomnia, sleepless nights. You can kind of see from the energy here too. This is somebody that's just really in their head. But with the six of pentacles, it's almost like, it's like, a I don't know how to explain it. Almost like a good kind of anxiety. It's like somebody is having it's like that fear that somebody has when they step out of their comfort zone, but they know that stepping out of their comfort zone is the right thing to do. And there might be like something, let me, let me look into the six of pentacles. Actually, I want to look into what that's about. Cause that's like mutual giving and receiving. It's like mutual, like energy balance. Basically we have the justice, the three of cups, the hierophant, king of cups, the Knight of Pentacles also is somebody who's very successful, very someone who's very well off. They have pretty much everything in their life that they want except for love. Um, and I feel like this is somebody who's learning to get back in touch with their emotions too. King of Cups is emotional, mature, um, emotionally available. So it's it's like somebody who's learning to like it's like you have justice, divine justice coming in for the things that you've been through. So it's like somebody has like, this is like fun and adventure, like excitement for life again, like your passion coming back again. Hierophant could be a, a long term commitment here. Um, and also just getting back in touch with your emotions and like being successful, being well off. Um, and then we have, it's like there's clarity too. the blindfold is off here with the two of swords reversed. Hmm. What is Six of Pentacles about? It's like you're starting, someone's starting a new life, but there's some anxiety that comes with starting that new life. Queen of Swords, the Sun, King of Wands, the Tower, the Seven of Swords. The Queen of Cups, the Three of Swords, Death, Knight of Swords, Temperance. Okay. So I feel I get a couple different messages here. Placement of the tower on the Seven of Swords is very interesting because the tower is like an overnight sudden change. It could be drama as well. The tower is not always bad. I mean, sometimes it's just like if you have like a spiritual awakening or an epiphany or just something out of nowhere, like just just major transitions, major, you know, overnight changes would be represented by the tower. Seven of Swords is, is dishonesty. It's also running away, escaping. Knight of Cups. The Fool. Page of Wands, the Eight of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, the Hanged Man. Yeah, I think this is just talking about, for some, I feel like that is an ex who just, whenever things got hard, they just kind of ran away or they were just honest. But I think that from what I'm seeing with these cards, we're wrapping up that cycle. Um... For others, I feel like this could actually be your energy where in the past, it's like when you had like the spiritual awakening, it's like you you ran from that. You were afraid of that. And it's like now you're not really as afraid of it anymore. It's like you're, let's see what we have here. So the fool is a new start. The Knight of cups is like opening your heart up. It's It's doing things different this time around. The fool, the page of wands, it's like it's like a new start, a new adventure, passion. Like your passion for life is coming back and you have success. Ten of Pentacles is like everything because Pentacles is about, it's about manifesting. Pentacles is also like, you know, money, abundance, the physical world, um, anything like that. So, I mean, Ten of Pentacles is like everything. It's like money, career, love, home, just like anything you could ever want. It's all represented there. And it's like, it's coming in because you have this new perspective because you're letting go of these old energies. Um, but yeah, like I said, for some of you, I mean, it could have both meanings. You know, sometimes the cards do have more than one meaning as well. 
But for others, I feel like that, like I said, I think the tower and the the seven of swords might be representing somebody who was dishonest, who was um, dramatic, or it's like when there was drama, they would just run from it. Like they didn't really care enough about you to try to fix it. They would just kind of like distance themselves. So, you know, there's different stories here, but, um, and again, there, there could be both meanings as well. It might not just be, it might not be just one. It might be both meanings, but the, the two storylines that I'm getting here from these cards, for some, I feel like you feel like you're the king or queen of wands. And I feel like for some, you're letting go of a queen of swords. So a, a king or queen of swords is somebody, and they're not like necessarily always bad, but I mean, they can be cold. They can be detached, be detached. They can be overly logical. They can be a little bit guarded, guarded and distrusting. Um, kind of a, a more of a cutthroat energy, more of a harsh energy than any of the other kings or queens of the deck. And for some, I feel like with the sun, that's like the most positive car on the deck. This The sun, sun is all about moving forward. So for some, I feel like you're leaving a queen of swords behind. It's like with three of swords and the death card, it's almost like there's an ending to that heartbreak. You're not heartbroken anymore. You've knight of swords. It's like honesty, lo honesty, loyalty, integrity. It's like you've learned that le lesson. And with the temperance card, it's like you have that balance here. So it's it's almost like some of you might be having a new perspective on a past relationship that was like toxic or one-sided for you, or it was just very traumatizing for you. You might be going back and like kind of just you're you're able to to have closure or you're able something might come in about this person too, or maybe something has come in about this person that gives you that closure that you're like you're seeing it from a new perspective. Um where you're kind of like, well I'm really glad I didn't end up with somebody who was so cold and overly logical and um you know, not very open, not very vulnerable, not very loving with me, you know, because the king or queen of swords, that's not somebody who's loving, that's not somebody who's romantic, not somebody who's emotional. So it's kind of like some of you are just you, you're whether this is coming in from this person or like from like a conversation or something you find out or whether it's just um, just, you know, general insights that you get while you're being in this introspective energy. Some of you, it's like that that pain is over, like you're trans transitioning out of that um, you're not letting it affect your perspective on relationships anymore or on life anymore. You're kind of, you're doing the shadow work. Basically. It's like, you're seeing how that was holding you back and how that was kind of distorting your reality and distorting your perception on, on people and whatnot. And so it's like, now you have this, this new perspective, this more balanced perspective, and you're, you're ending that cycle for others. I feel like you might have somebody who's naturally a queen or king of cups. But they might be in queen of queen or king of swords energy to a degree because they might just be a little bit guarded or just trusting or just afraid of getting hurt again. Um, but it seems like, again, two different stories here. Um, and both could be true for you, you know, take it how it resonates. But anyway, but yeah, in, in that context, I feel like the Queen of Swords, it's not necessarily somebody who's naturally cold, but it might be somebody who's just a little bit, you know, you see how she has her sword too, how she's kind of protecting herself, just somebody who's a little bit damaged, um, just maybe a little bit guarded, a little bit distrusting, maybe a little bit unsure of your motives. Um you know, they don't want to be in a one-sided connection. They don't want to get their heart broken again. Um, maybe somebody who's just, who's just a little cautious, a little bit afraid of getting hurt. Um, but I feel like in that case, I feel like this person's moving out of that energy and they're getting in their more natural state of being a king or queen of cups. And they're doing that because they see that you're the king of wands now. So this is somebody, you know, who's basically king of wands is somebody who's passionate, who's charismatic, but also, um, they go out, you know, being, being a, a fire, you know, wands is, is with, is represented by the, it's the fire element. So a king or queen of wands is they're passionate, but they're enthusiastic and they go after what they want. Like this is somebody who steps up and takes control and, you know, pursues their dreams, pursues their passions. So it might be one of those things where it's like this person might, um, have been a little bit guarded and scared, but then it's like if when they see you in this King of Wands energy, they see, or or in this Queen of Wands energy, male or female, but it's like they see that you're stepping up, they see that you're, um, 
you know, going after what you want. They see that you're being assertive. They see that you're, you're in a different energy. You're in, you know, it, it's kind of like they're matching your energy. Like if you step forward and you're being in that passionate energy and kind of taking control and taking, like being in the lead basically, um, and this person has more certainty, then, then they're going to come out of Queen of Swords energy because they're not going to have as much reason to be afraid of, you know, rejection or being hurt or whatever. So it's like seeing you be this King of Wands is going to get this person in this King or Queen of Cups energy where it's like they're, you know, opening up to you. And then it's like this end to this painful cycle. You know what I mean? And it's like kind of like making promises to each other and, um, vows and stability but having that balance with the temperance energy it's like things are are balanced out like compromises being made um just finding finding balance basically so anyway i hope this helped uh like i said if this resonates please comment below even just a heart comment um i really appreciate it and if you want a reading my email is below in the description box thank you